All right, good morning everyone and welcome to my Facebook page, Weightless. If you're new to this page, then feel free to give it a like and RSVP to our monthly events. This, this morning I'm super excited to introduce to you Linda, Linda Lederman of Bala Boosta's Secret. Hello Linda, thank you for joining Hi, us everybody. today. <laughs> Hello, uh, we're so excited to hear your dinner demon tips, the sanity saving tips today. Before we launch into that, I just want to tell everyone who is joining us live, thank you for joining us. Hello. Let us know if you are live. Where are you joining us from? Where in the world are you? Sometimes we go international, but most of the time we're in the US. So just let us know where you're joining us from. Feel free to weigh in on the comments and tell us what your top troubles are when it comes to dinner time, because I know I have quite a few, but we want to make this an interactive experience for you. Just a little FYI, this live stream is available for you for the next two days. I'm going to keep this up until March 6th. So you, if you're watching the replay, you have until March 6th to get this in and watch and benefit from Linda's advice today. But if you cannot do it from that time, then you're going to need to find us in other ways or connect directly with Linda. So you have three days to watch this replay. Let us comment below the video with hashtag replay if you are watching the replay because um, Linda will continue to answer questions throughout the next few days. So this is your opportunity to get your questions answered, to say hi to us and let us know that you're watching so we can continue to deliver fabulous content. Briefly about me, my name is Jen Espinoza Goswami. I'm a motivational speaker and holistic coach. And every month I feature special experts on topics of health and wellness. And today I'm super excited. We're in March, which is National Nutrition Month. And I am so happy to welcome Linda, Linda Lederman. She lives in New York with her husband, two hungry teenagers, one of whom helped us get set up today, <laughs> and two dogs, as well as a host of different wildlife in her backyard. She describes herself as a kitchen confidence coach, which I love that. Uh, who doesn't want more confidence in the kitchen, especially one year into COVID where we're cooking three square meals a day at home? It is frustrating. We're getting to that point of time where we're just like, I don't even feel like cooking anything anymore, so I can't wait to hear more. Linda is a graduate of the Ruby Cooking School, also of the Institute of Inter Integrative Nutrition, IIN, and when she isn't busy helping busy moms rid themselves of their particular dinner demons, she can be found hiking and turning the ordinary into extraordinary with fun, ease, and speed. Welcome, Linda. Hi, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so it looks like you're joining us today from your kitchen. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Seems an appropriate place to be. Awesome. Well, Linda's not going through a demo of cooking today, so don't worry. You don't have to be in your kitchen either. But she will be sharing some very important tips before she shares some of her sanity saving tips. I have a few questions for you, Linda, if you're okay. Go for it. Awesome. Well, I was just curious. Um, the term when I first connected with you, your website name is Bala Busta Secret. And I'm like, what does Bala Busta mean? Can you tell us more? Absolutely. It's a great question. So balabusta is a Yiddish term for a woman who makes a fine home. But it's not a Martha Stewart, put coverings on your couches, you know, be careful kind of fine home. It's the kind of fine home where everybody wants to go to. It's a welcoming home, great food, great comfort, great companionship. Um, you want to be the go-to place. So that's what Balabusta Secret's about. Make that home the welcoming, delicious, fun-loving, and warm, embracing home. Oh, I love that idea. So just curious, it's not the Martha Stewart. So do you have totally some challenges Martha with Martha? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not tied to um, specifics. You're allowed your creativity. You're allowed your input. You're allowed to make mistakes. You can have as much fun with mistakes and laughing at your mistakes as you can celebrating your success. I love it. I love it because, you know, sometimes we get this perception, especially with all the cooking shows on Food Network, where these 10 year old kids are whipping out these five course dinners that look beautiful. And we're like, I don't have those kinds of skills. No, <laughs> it I'll, feels I'll frustrating. Let you, I'll let Go you know a secret. I wasn't always a good cook. In fact, I really stunk at cooking. Um, but my mother was worse. 
And you know, some people are very lucky and they have either a grandmother who's a great cook or a mother who passes down all the knowledge. I didn't have that. My mother was really bland and very uncreative. I love her dearly, but her food wasn't the best. So in high school, I would complain. So she said to me, okay, big shot, I'm buying you the joy of cooking. You pick out a recipe a week, tell me what you need for ingredients, go cook it. Show me that you can do better. Well, I was horrible. I, I couldn't follow the recipe. I had no idea what they were talking about. And it got to the point where I was banned from cooking. So that's my background. I mean, terrible cook. Um, but then I worked at it and I took courses and I experimented and I invited friends over just to try food. And if it was terrible, it was terrible. And we could laugh at how bad it was. And slowly but surely, um, we became, I became a much better cook. And my house is now the go-to house, which is great. Oh, that's so cool. So did you experience, I know you refer to yourself as a kitchen confidence coach. How long did it take you to kind of build up your confidence again after not doing so good with the joy of cooking before you're like, no, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to try again. <laughs> um, that was in high school and I'm, I'm not a quitter. So it didn't really deter me. And it was kind of like, okay, game on, challenge on. Um, so I, I took it in a very different way, you know, not to, to dissuade me, but to encourage me to do better. Oh, okay. Okay. I love it. I love it. And eventually you get to a point where you you're have good. to cook, right? At some point you're good. <laughs> <laughs> you will get there eventually. So thank you yes. for telling us more about not just your early experiences with cooking, but also what Balaboustas is. I love learning new things. I didn't, I don't know anything about Yiddish words. So that's very fascinating. Um, you mentioned that one of the things you help moms do is you know, conquer their, their dinner demons. And I'm just curious, Linda, what is your personal dinner demon? Um, probably my dinner demon is I cook for, and this is very common for many moms and many families, people in my family have either different dietary requirements, different food preferences, um, and you don't want to be cooking three different dinners at the same time every night. It's hard enough to cook dinner, period. But if you have to do separate meals all the time for everybody in your family, it's terrible. So. When I do try to plan my meals, I think about, okay, how can I adapt what I'm planning on making to make everybody happy? Mm -hmm. So does that mean then that you don't make a bunch of different things for different preferences in your family? Um, it's gotten to the point where I can make things that everybody will eat, which is really, really nice. Um, and my family has learned to be very open. They're adventurous eaters. They're willing to try new foods. And I'm always trying new foods, new cuisines, new spices, new cooking techniques. So if you keep it interesting, that's number. That's a really great thing to do. But another trick I've learned that if you're making something someone in your family loves when you're serving dinner, if you make dinner fun, they're going to eat what's on the table because they're trying the experience. So along cooking meals, I do a lot with fun dinner, dinner conversations, games at the dinner table, and it keeps everybody engaged and eating and not focusing on, oh, geez, I don't have asparagus. Yes, and I remember that's why we connected originally, because you had shared something about your dinner time conversations, because I know at the time I connected with you, it was back in October, I was experiencing trouble with just sitting around the table and none of us had anything to say because we spend all the time with each other during, uh, you know, shelter in place and things like that. We run out of things to say. So I know that definitely intrigued me. And if for those who are listening, check out Linda's website. I'll pop the, the link in the comments because she has all sorts of articles and blogs and information on how to get your kids to open up. And I know you have two teenagers, so are they pretty open to some of the suggestions that you have there? Yes, um, because we make it a game. You know, the worst thing to do, and especially, you're right, we're sitting around with everybody 24 seven at this point, you know what they've done in their day. <laughs> you know, it's there's not a lot of whole things that you can ask, but if you do create conversations or plan a meal about a funky holiday, and, and like you said on my website, I'll have something about National Poetry Week. And then what I ask my kids to do is, okay, come up with a poem and bring it to dinner. Well, what teenager wants to come up with a poem? <laughs> you know, they, they looked at me like I had four heads. But I said, no, you know, poetry can be anything. So my son wrote a very bawdy rap song. 
Uh, my husband wrote something. My daughter found a poem online, and I found some fun poems to read. But it sparks conversation. It sparks creativity. And you're not always the one trying to come up with things to say because it's hard enough to come up with your meals. But if you have to be the entertainment host at the dinner table, too, it's beyond stressful. Oh, I agree with you there. You know, you, you've already done enough during the course of your day. But if you have to lead a conversation, too, and you're like, but I provided this meal. Someone else step up and do something. <laughs> I love that idea. So I know one of the things that I get excited about uh, when it comes to cooking, like I'm not always excited about cooking. I do help people with meal planning and things like that because it's fun for me. But one of the things that really excites me about cooking is when I get my kids in the kitchen. If I'm like, I'm going to make this and they're like, I want to help too. Is that Has that been your experience as well, Linda, that your kids are more interested in what you're doing in the kitchen? My kids are actually learning to be really good cooks. My daughter has taken it upon herself to make her lunches from scratch. My son loves to, and when the weather's nice, to grill outside and, and he started making all kinds of dishes because he's getting older and he's you know at some point he's gonna be on his own and he wants to be able to entertain his friends because that's what we do. So I've always included them planning the parties and helping cook for the parties and now they work to help with their own meals as well. What a beautiful I think it's, I think it's, I think it's key to do at a very, very young age. And one of the things that I can't say bothers me, but I think is lacking today is that those cooking skills aren't passed down. So you're losing family traditions, you're losing family recipes, you're losing nutrition, you're losing health. So you really owe it to your family and to yourself to teach some basics. And if you don't do the basics, you can find someone like me who can do a virtual cooking class with you and your kids to start you off on the right foot. I love it. And thank you for sharing that. That's one of the ways that you work with people is you offer virtual cooking classes, which is great because, you know, some of us are still not comfortable leaving our homes or maybe we'll order in if we don't feel like cooking. But how convenient to have someone walk you through, especially if you don't feel very confident. Maybe your cooking skills are not strong. Maybe you have recipes. But like you mentioned, Linda, for your, from your own experience, it's maybe not the best thing like you've had kids like throw it in the garbage or like, you know, there's some picky eaters in your family. There are different or your, ways. Or your dog gets very heavy. <laughs> <laughs> that too. That's awesome. So um, before we launch into your tips, because you have some really good tips to share with us today. Yep. One thing that always comes up is what is the tool that you use the most in your own kitchen? Like something that you cannot live without when it comes to prepping or cooking healthy dinners. I'm going to show you. Just for okay. <laughs> Two things. You need good knives because if you have a sharp knife, it'll cut easily and safely. If your knives are dull, watch your fingers because it makes life really, really miserable. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big, big gadget person. My mother bought every gadget on the planet. Keep in mind, she couldn't cook, but she had gadgets beyond belief. I don't have too many gadgets, but this... I don't know if you can see it. Is it a mandolin? It's a microplane mandolin. I have other mandolins, but this one saves me so much time because it's adjustable on the side. You can adjust your thickness. You put it over a bowl, go like this with your vegetables. I can make a salad in seconds because it cuts my onions, it cuts my carrots, it cuts my celery. And I, I want to say something about salad for just one second. At the sure. beginning of the week, when I bring in my groceries, I take a big Tupperware, whatever container you have, line it with paper towels. Put your salad in there. Don't put in cucumbers. Don't put in tomatoes. Those are very watery. But you can put in your cabbages, your carrots, your celeries, your lettuces, your sprouts, whatever you want. Fold paper towel over the top. Put the lid on. Your salad will last for a week. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, I don't want to eat salad for a week. My God, that would drive me nuts. But think about it. If, if you're making tacos one night, instead of putting out your vegetable tray to put the toppings on the tacos, you know, your lettuces, your tomatoes, your onions, your salad's already made. You can put that salad on the taco. It's going to save you time at night. If you're making sandwiches during the day and you need to put some lettuce or something on it, take it out of the salad bin. It's always there for you to do whatever you want. If you're making Asian meatballs and lettuce wraps. You can take your shredded carrots and put it right on it. So it's really nice to have. And then you can also use that same salad for lunches when you have leftover chicken, leftover salmon. Put that on top of the salad. You've got a great 
lunch. So it's, it saves a million steps all during the week. If you can just prep your salad in five minutes, use the handy microplane. <laughs> 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 well, thank you for sharing your top tool there, and I love that you pulled it out. I'm actually terrified of those things because I'm afraid I'm going to slice off my entire finger. I won't let my kids near or something like that. So you obviously, know, they have, there's gloves. Safety. They have, they oh. have a glove you can put on that you can buy it on Amazon for probably 10 bucks, maybe a little less. And um, the fish mongers use it when they're slicing and filleting the fish and they're opening up their oysters. And it's like a chainmail glove, and you can't get cut. Awesome. And also, the, and these also come with safety guards. So if you put the safety guard on the vegetable when you're going, there's plastic around you and you can't get your fingers near it. Well, thank you for those tips because like I said, that's so, that's a tool that I'm very wary of, um, especially because my child, one of my children is only 10, so, and she likes mm -hmm. to cook. And um, my, but my, my kids know how to use it and they've used it for a long time. Wonderful, so, yeah, yeah, so kitchen safety first. <laughs> Absolutely, well, I'm gonna go ahead and let you, let you share with us your top tips. You've already shared some really good tips, the salad tip, the tool tip, but share with us everything you got. Let's hear how to save Give our sanity when it comes to dinner time. Okay, so one of the main problems that a lot of moms have is comes five o'clock, you are exhausted, you've worked all day, you've done whatever you've needed to do all the days. In non-COVID times, you're bringing your kids back and forth to after school activities. In COVID times, you've just had it with your kids. Um, and then all of a sudden comes the, what's for dinner, mom? What's for dinner, mom? What's for dinner, mom? And your head's exploding because you have no clue and it's five and they're getting hungry and then they're snacking don't ruin your appetite and yet you have no idea what to cook so my first tip is try to do a little meal planning um and i have courses on this so you know it's i'm just going to give you a quick summary on things you can do to make your life easier number one is know what your calendar looks like if you know you have extra work running late at night or kids have demands that they need, don't plan on cooking a really time consuming dinner that night. It just, it's crazy. So always look at your calendar and know what, you, what your time constraints are. Another thing that's really helpful is know what you have. Do a quick pantry inventory, a refrigerator inventory and a freezer inventory. You'll be surprised how much food you have that either you don't know how to cook, you don't know what to do with, or it's getting towards its expiration date and you need to use it up before you're wasting time, food, and money. So if you know what you have, the next thing is to know what you need. So come up with a list of recipes your family likes. It may be a handful, it may be not. There's also a zillion places out there where you can find recipes. You can find them in magazines. You can find them in cookbooks. You can find them online. You can find them on Pinterest. You can find them on YouTube. There's, you can find them on Balabusta Secret. There's a million places to get your recipes. Try some. I wouldn't suggest trying a new recipe every night because that is way overwhelming. But maybe once every week, once every two weeks, once every three weeks, add something to your repertoire to break up the monotony. But once you have your list of recipes, Figure out what you want to do for the week. You don't want to eat chicken every single day, but you can make chicken, let's say on a Monday. I'm just going to make up an example. Let's say you make roast chicken on Monday or you buy a roast chicken. Everything doesn't have to be from scratch. You're trying to make your life easier. So you have a roast chicken on Monday. You could take the, buy more than you need. You could take the leftovers and the next day put it in chicken taco soup. You haven't cooked the chicken again you don't have to do a whole lot of work. If you make the chicken taco soup base in bulk and freeze it, take it out of the freezer, add the chicken, you got a dinner in a couple of minutes and you really haven't had to do any extra work. You can take those same roasted chicken leftovers, put them in chicken tacos for your taco night. You don't have to do it, you know, and it could be like two nights away. It doesn't have to be back to back. My kids don't like leftovers per se. So I try to redo them in a way that's going to be still be flavorful the protein's not going to dry out and it gives you a whole different taste sensation you can make asian meatballs one night and i like to make them in the oven so i don't splatter because i can't stand the splatter all over my stove but you can bake them in 15 minutes in the oven it's really simple one night you can serve them over peanut pad thai noodles the next night you can chop them up and put it in lettuce wraps, Asian lettuce wraps with an Asian coleslaw. Again, you've already cooked that main meal, but you're presenting it very differently the next day and you don't have to do that much work the next day. 
So when you're looking at your calendar and you're looking at the menu that you want to make, maybe on a day that you know you're going to be really late, use those leftovers creatively. So if you actually do some meal planning, it's going to help you in the process. Another thing you can do to cut down some of your work is batch cooking. And I'm kind of describing part of that and what I'm saying already. But you can make a big set of rice. Serve it as your side just one night. The second night, I make fried rice. Because if you're going to make fried rice, you should always use at least day-old rice. So if you're ordering Chinese takeout, save some of the rice in those little white containers. It makes great fried rice the next night. Don't try to make it the first night you make rice. It just, for some reason, it doesn't work. Um, but that's again, so now your, your side just already done. So if you've got your fried rice, maybe you've got the leftover chicken, maybe you've got leftover shrimp, put it on top of the rice. You've got a great meal really, really quickly. And you've just taken care of two nights of, of dinner. So meal planning is really important. Knowing what you have, knowing how to use it. And if you look at your recipes, you can see what common ingredients are in your recipes. So when you're making your shopping list, right, look at all your recipes. Add up how many garlics you need, how much onion you need, and you put that total on your grocery list. And when you make your grocery list, make your list in order of the way shop, uh, grocery stores laid out. And they're all pretty similar. Your produce are on the outer perimeter, which is really where you want to do your most shopping because that's the most nutritious foods to begin with. But if you make your grocery list in a logical way, broken down by aisle or common item, put your grains in one category, your beans in one category, um, your dairy in another category, your shopping will be going faster, you'll know what you need because you have a list. You know what you need because you know what your recipes need and you know what you're missing in your pantry and you know what you can use up. So those are really, really, really helpful things. If you're running out of ideas for conversation, there's a lot of things you can do. They're crazy calendars and like I said, these are on my website as well, but you can look to see what day of the week it is. There's a holiday in September in California called Chicken Boy Day. <laughs> it sounds totally ridiculous, but what it is was there used to be an advertising agency in some town in California, and they had this chicken boy mascot on the top of their building. It was, it was huge, you know, one of these things that you could see for miles. At some point, they either left the building or went out of business, but everybody loved the mascot, and so the town decided to adopt Chicken Boy Day. And once a year, they honor this half chicken, half boy statue. It's, it's nuts. Holidays don't have to be really serious. So you could do a chicken boy celebration on that day and you can make a really interesting chicken dish and then you could have conversations such as, well, if you had to save a toy from your childhood, which one is the most memorable to you and why would you say it? save it? So you can gear conversation to the theme of the day or the topic that you want to do and all of a sudden your meals become better because everybody's enjoying it. They're enjoying the conversation, they're laughing, and nobody's saying, did you do your homework? Right. So that's really, really important. Other things you can do to shake up your menus, besides looking at menus, if you want to coordinate things, you can change, all right, you have dinner things, and Taco Tuesday is just one. I mean, you can pick an, uh, a culture you want, you can pick, um, I'm gonna make everything red all day. You can, you know, there's no rules it's just limited by your creativity. So think out of the box. And again, I, I do these suggestions on my website, but there's other places you can find them as well. Another thing you can do is take the protein that you're used to cooking and cooking it differently. If you always roast your chicken, maybe you want to make it in a saucepan. Um, trade, I don't know if you have Trader Joe's where you we are, do. but most towns have something like that, or you can find them in your grocery store. Trader Joe's makes a great... Um, tiki masala, which is an Indian simmer sauce. So what you can do is you can take your chicken tenders or your chicken breast. And if you're short on time, I suggest you slice your chicken breast because the smaller your pieces are, is instead of a thick chicken breast, it'll cook faster. So if you saute your sliced chicken breast with, let's say, onion, some garlic, some ginger, just you know to brown them, add a simmer sauce in it, put a cover on it, in 10, 15 minutes, dinner is done. One pot to clean, make some rice on the side. You know, the next day you're gonna make fried rice with something. Um, and you've got two dinners done in 15, 20 minutes. And it's delicious and it's probably something you haven't served your family before. So it's an unusual taste. So you may wanna have some kind of interesting conversation 
to tell them why you're making it, to tie it into something. Listen, you can look and see what's going on in the news and make a dinner around, let's say Korea was in the news, make Korean meatballs, you know, and, and tie things in. Um, the possibilities really are endless. It just takes a little time. But once you have your list of recipes that you like, and you know that you're going to be adding to them, you just have to look at your list and boom, your meal plan is, is done. So, so it sounds like you recommend starting with recipes, searching for recipes that may or may not fit into your family's needs or the ingredients you currently have on hand. What if the recipe has something that is an ingredient you're not familiar with, you don't know how to get it, or exactly. you're not sure if you're gonna use it again in the future. So you're like, should I buy this thing? It's Maybe it's a spice, maybe it's an unusual ingredient for your family. What would you recommend for that? Okay, so there's a, a whole bunch of things. Number one is see if there's a substitution for that ingredient that you already have. Again, you don't have to follow a recipe to a T. You know, you do have some flexibility. So number one is to see if there's a substitute that you already do have, because you don't want to be running to the store all the time. Number two, um, there's a website, uh, or maybe it's an app, but I, I do it on my computer, called Eat Your Books, eatyourbooks.com, and you can put in your cookbooks, just the title, and then once they're in there, you can search by ethnic cuisine, by author, by protein, by ingredient. So let's say you bought, let's say you weren't familiar with cumin, and you don't want to buy it because you didn't know what you could use it for. You could type in cumin, see a ton of recipes in the books you already have. Or you could type on your computer, recipes with cumin, see what they are, and, and you can say to yourself, well, does this look like anything I'm going to use in the future? It's really a waste of your time and effort to buy one trick. You know, you just, it's, it's a waste of money if you're going to, and we all have things in our, um, in our pantries that we were so excited. Oh, this recipe is going to be great. You bought these ingredients and they're sitting there. So one of the things I'm working on right now, um, and if you're on my Facebook or uh, later on, you will see, I'm going to ask you to send me an ingredient you have that you have no idea what to do with. And I'll give you some recipes, ideas on what to do with it. Wow. So is that something that we just connect with you on Facebook to for those ideas on what to do with those recipes or that, that ingredient? Yeah, I'm going to be doing, um, yeah, I'm, I'm working on it now probably in, the, probably in the next couple of weeks. It will be um, probably a weekly event. You know, send me something that you just don't know what to do with and I'll give you some suggestions. Perfect. I'm going to pop that in the comments below there. Um, what are some of the favorite or most commonly used ingredients and or spices that you have in your kitchen, Linda? Okay, I have, I'm embarrassed to tell you how many drawers I have filled with spices and ingredients because <laughs> I don't want anybody to think that they need to be as obsessive as I am. But I do like to try a million different things. Um, and I do like to try many different ethnic cuisines. So I do have some a, a lot of variety because not all cuisines use the same ingredients. But I, you will always find garlic, always find garlic in my house, both fresh and minced. Um, you will always find some kinds of Italian seasonings. That I would buy as a blend. I use my herbs fresh, but I also use an Italian blend. I have a Greek seasoning blend that you can either buy or make. And one of the things you want to do is have your spice blends handy. So like I said, you can either make spice blends. So if you've got a piece of fish and you're staring at it and you're going, well, what the heck am I going to make with this fish tonight? Open up your spice drawer and say, oh, I've got this Mediterranean blend. Oh, I've got this Middle Eastern blend. Oh, I've got this Indian blend, Mexican blend. And then you can put it on with a little olive oil and broil it or saute it. You've got a really interesting dish that took you no time because you're already prepared. So spice blends are really good. And I, I can't limit what I have because I really do have a lot because I like to experiment and I like to play. And I don't like to measure when I use my spices. Um, oh, okay, like, interesting. Yeah, we like things spicy. Um, we like things flavorful. And I am not um, shy to use a lot of flavor when I cook. Okay, so it sounds like you personally use both fresh ingredients, like herbs and garlic and things like that, but you also have either minced, dried, or blend spice blends that you use in your kitchen. What would you recommend for someone who's not terribly confident or is afraid that all their fresh ingredients will go bad before they get around to them? Are there specific blends sure. that you would recommend? Sure, you can't go wrong with a taco blend. You can't go wrong with an Italian blend, uh, a Greek blend, 
Um, maybe a curry powder, if you're willing to be a little bit adventurous, because you can put curry on a lot, a lot of different things. Um, but some really basics. And in the handout that you're going to get today, if you sign up for um, my Dinner Sanity Saving Secrets, it has a list of suggested spices for your pantry. Perfect. And I will pop the links. So Linda mentioned that uh, she has a dinner. Oh, I'm going to forget the name of this dinner time sanity saving tips. It's a guide. So if you oh, enter your. Oh, it's upside if, down. Hold on. So if you enter your information there, Linda will send all of that information to you. So she's been sharing a lot of really good tips here. She showed you the guide just now. All you have to do is go to her website, enter your email, you get that completely free. So if you're like, yeah, these are great tips, but what do I do with these tips? I'm a big fan of taking action and implementing what you've learned. So if you've watched us, whether live on the replay, get her free tips, her free guide. That's what Linda's here to do is to help you shake it up in the kitchen, get more confident and put the yum back into your life. Um, we're about the end of our live stream today, but I want to make sure, Linda, is there one main thing that you would like to leave people with in terms of getting their confidence in the kitchen, not getting fatigued by all this cooking we're doing, something that you'd like to leave us with? Yes, make it fun. If you look at it as, oh my gosh, I have to make dinner again and again and again, you're not going to be happy. It's going to be reflected in the, the flavor of your food. I always tell my kids the most important thing in your cooking is put love in it. And you have to go into your cooking with a good attitude that I'm doing this because it's going to be great. My family's going to like it. Or if it's bad, we're going to have a lot of fun. And we'll have great stories to tell. So most important with your cooking is to make life memorable. Make it easy, make it fun, put the yum in there. And once it's fun, it's no longer a chore. If you're willing to experiment, willing to have some failures, as in most things in life, you know, you got to start. So you can make your ordinary meals extraordinary, whether it's done with the conversation you have at your meal time, the cuisines you cook, or the love you put into it. But family memories, listen, all our self celebrations circle around food, you know, birthday parties, weddings, whatever ethnic religious services that you celebrate, usually it has to do with food. And that's because it's wonderful shared experiences. So make the most of it and enjoy it. Awesome. I love that suggestion. And you're right. If it's not fun, why would you keep doing it? If it's a chore, if it's something that you're frustrated by, it, you're not going to keep doing it. And someone's got, you know, your family has to eat, you have to eat. So you might as well enjoy yourself while you're in the kitchen. Um, I just want to throw a challenge out for you, Linda, if you are open to receiving it. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> if you, yeah. So if you had five or 10 minutes to whip something up quick, what would you choose to make? Okay. I mentioned the Asian meatballs. Um, before my kids absolutely love it. You can make it with ground turkey. You can make it with pork. You can make it with chicken. You can make it with tofu. A couple of minutes to, to put in the oven, boom, in 10, 15 minutes it's cooked. So that I would do in a real quick pinch. Um, I would do a salmon with citrus and Mediterranean flavors broiled 10 minutes, boom, you're done. Um, you can do a pasta dish really, really quickly. Put pesto on it. You know, you can buy your pesto if you don't want to make it from scratch. You can make your own meat sauce by buying a jarred pasta sauce that you like and, you know, brown up some meat, put it in there and add your own seasonings. And always add seasonings. <laughs> always add flavor. <laughs> but um, you can do a pasta if you really, really had to. Awesome. Well, thank you. Those are some really good tips. And it's kind of funny when you think about time saving tips. It could take you 15 minutes to order something from a restaurant nearby and another 10 or 15 minutes to pick it up. Jen, you've frozen on my screen. Oh, can you hear me okay? Now you're good. Now you're good. <laughs> awesome. I apologize for that. The internet connection is bad. But I'm just trying to share that um, when it comes to time saving, it's all about how you approach time. Linda gave us ideas on how to quickly yep. put together tasty meals that your family will enjoy, which could save you time from driving somewhere and picking up food from a restaurant near you. So is it worth it to you to create some memories in your kitchen with your children, 
to have those dinner time conversations. That's up to you folks. But thank you so much, Linda. It has been wonderful to hear your tips. Download her free guide. The link is in the comments and make sure to ask your questions. Like what is your dinner demon? Let Linda know. You have until March 6th to watch the replay of today's video. Thank you once again, Linda, for sharing your top sanity saving tips today. Thanks so much for having me. And really, please send me your questions. I'm really happy to help and uh, make life memorable. You know, we go around once, make it really good, make it flavorful. Well, cook it up with your help. Thanks so much, Linda. Have a good afternoon. Thanks. You too. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.